All right. Fighthype.com, Sean Zatel here with Showtime. Sean Porter, the two-time welterweight champ, fresh off a, another grueling workout in this Las Vegas heat. But, uh, Sean, you also coming off a, a great weekend of commentating yeah. on Fox. Um, you know, first first off with, with Manny Pacquiao, you know, the, the hand speed, just in terms of hand speed, it seemed like a lot of it was still there, but obviously some things were missing mm -hmm. from the guy we're used to seeing. What would you say that was? What, you know what? At the end of the fight, he said, yeah, my, my I, I think he said my legs hurt, were hurting. Cramped. Or, were, were cramped. Mm -hmm. And I just got to wonder... In his language, would he have said it differently? In his language, would he have been able to expound on what he meant? You know, and I, and I'm not I'm not saying he's ignorant in terms of his English. I just wonder if it would have came off a little different. And not really that it came off as an excuse. I just when you're so great and in one fight we don't see all of the greatness. I, I just want more of why you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always very honest. There are there are things that happen in camp that we everyone keeps uh, disclosed just because we don't we don't feel like we should introduce that to the to the uh, to our opponent and then beyond that we don't want to introduce that into the world and then here you go you're doing an interview right before the fight and everybody wants to talk about X Y Z you know so we we all have those things that happen in camp so on and so forth but you know coming out of camp they sounded legit they sounded they sounded ready. And um, the other part about that, which I find extremely interesting, and I know you could figure it out really quickly. In 70 odd fights, has Manny Pacquiao ever seen a Cuban fighter? No, uh, not off the top of my head, no. Fought fighters from all around the world. All around the world, <laughs> and with 70 fights, and with, as BK, Brian Kenny said, two uh, Hall of Fame careers, and I mean, we can go down the list: Cotto, Shane, Mosley, Ma uh, Mayweather, uh, Margarito. Uh, I mean, the who's who's: Barrera, Mar Morales, um, uh, Mar Mar Morales. L uh, excuse Lidwaba. me. Um, yeah, Marquez. I said Morales. <laughs> yeah. Marquez. I mean, we can go down the list, and yet he's Claudia, never Claudia, all kinds of countries. <laughs> and he's never seen a Cuban. So there were there were things that happened in the ring that he just flat out wasn't prepared for. And as I said on my podcast, when you are a guy who's looking up, you, you, you want to handle what's there in front of you, but you always want to see where you're going. And you can't help but look at Mayweather. I was looking at Mayweather and, and when I turned pro. And I continue to look at Mayweather when I was at Mayweather fights. And I continue to look at Mayweather even when he fought McGregor. And I, at that point in time, I finally decided, all right, that fight's never going to happen. But I'm still looking at that dude and, and imagining what it would be like to be in the ring with him. Imagining what adjustments I would have to make. What adjustments I would have to So saying all that to say that um, Ugas, your dentist, was well prepared for this fight. He was prepared for this fight probably two or three years ago when he lost to me and he's like, man, I got I got to be a champion. How can I get to that champion? He's still looking at, at Manny Pacquiao, you know, so um, Ugas was just extremely uh, prepared. I think some things happened in the ring that Manny wasn't really prepared for. And I think that um, before he could make any adjustments, the, the rest that kind of set in, you know, in terms, I think if anything, he, when he refers to his legs hurting, he may be referring to fatigue. Mm -hmm. Which which can set in in that second half of a fight, especially if you're 42, you know. So while we want to always uh, respect Manny Pacquiao and, and always respect the job that he does in the ring, because it still was an exciting fight, you know. I think we we it's hard to sell your Dennis Ugas versus Manny Pacquiao, but then when you when we try to sell it by saying this is still going to be a great fight, it definitely lived up to Fox's expectations. It lived up to my expectations. Mm -hmm. I think we were maybe five rounds in. And I just had this thought that 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 held me from speaking, and my thought was, man, this is a great fight. And then finally, BK just came on. He said, you know, we're looking at a great fight right now. I'm like, BK, that's the only thing I can think right now is that this is a great fight, you know. So we always kind of exceeded expectations. We yeah, yeah. it exceeded yeah. the expectations. Yeah. I think of fans and, and people who thought that Let's be it fair. wasn't going to be a good fight. Yeah. And then you know, last thing I'm going to say is why we we always want to be respectful to Manny Pacquiao. We definitely have to give. Two salutes, five salutes, 25 salutes, 100 salutes to your Dennis Ugas and his camp, Silas, man. Um, they did a terrific job getting in the ring, in the ring, and then coming out of the ring. Because that it's coming off to me, Sean, and correct me if you're wrong, that all due respect to the great Manny Pacquiao, yeah. that you, 
you don't want any leg cramps or Manny's age to take away from the fact yeah. what Ugas did. Yeah. That this was more what Ugas did correctly than Manny, you know, obviously he's 42, but more than Manny aging mm -hmm. or it was good tactics and, and boxing by definitely Ugas. Definitely good tactics and good boxing by Ugas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always have to refer back to my fight, especially for people who, who will say, well, if Ugas beat Manny, does that mean Sean can beat Manny? Well, Styles make fights. You know what I mean? So, and I love that about or the welterweight Spence division. Have stopped Manny we, and yeah, 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 I mean, we've been saying that about the welterweight division. So, to open the fight, I felt like your Dennis Ugas did a terrific job of holding his ground, knowing what he wanted to do in terms of how he, he was going to defend Manny Pacquiao, and then what he wanted to do to offset Manny Pacquiao. And I just thought that the questions that he proposed from the opening bell never allowed Manny to even find a rhythm. So when you're talking about my, my legs were, were, were fatigued or I was tired, so on and so forth, I know from experience, when a fighter gets you here, everything else goes. Mm -hmm. So before y'all think that it's the 42 that got to him, realize that Ugas did some things to stop that 42-year-old from doing anything that he did when he was 40 against Keith Thurman. Anything that he did b before that, you know. So I definitely want to say that what Ugas did to start that fight, set the tone, and it carried itself out, man. I thought I just thought it was terrific, man. I, I love uh, I love boxing. I love the art of boxing, and uh, and I love what Ugas did uh, a couple nights ago. You said that uh, we on the Porterway podcast that Manny sh should call it a day, should retire. Um, had a lot of respect for the for Pacquiao, uh, but let's just say you know he he still won some rounds and and had a solid fight against the top five welterweight. Yeah. From that perspective, should he could he keep fighting? And 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 he talked also about having one last homecoming fight in Manila in, in oh, the Philippines. Very the, nice. If that's the case, would do you think he could still beat a Robert Guerrero? Would is that the right kind of fight for what him? I, what I would say, if you're gonna do a fight in Manila, one last fight at home, take your dinners over there, do a rematch, mm. pay that man, make your adjustments, and show the, your greatness. I know before that we was all saying, and I still would love for him to retire. That's your tomorrow. option A. My right. option A is to retire. But if you're going to keep going, no, we don't want to see you against Roberto uh, uh, Guerrero, Robert Guerrero. We don't want to see you against anybody. And then guess what? It's the, the road only gets harder. The road doesn't get easier beyond Ugas. You know what I mean? I say take Ugas to Manila, pay that man, make those adjustments, show your greatness, beat him, and then call it a day. And, and also because I do I will I will go on record for saying I do think that given a second chance Manny Pacquiao the corner could make adjustments come to the ring differently I would I would wonder if if Silas would prepare for any more or less than they prepare for obviously now even think about that in a full camp to get ready for Manny Pacquiao what do they bring differently to the ring you know what I mean so come on a rematch makes sense and a rematch would be great because we saw number one number one was damn good if not great mm -hmm. so that's what I'll, I'll say on that. But I, my option A is definitely, I think, uh, salute and uh, go go ahead and be a, pre, a, a presidente over there <laughs> in the Philippines. And Sean, for yourself, you know, whenever Canelo or Floyd would win a big, or excuse me, Canelo or Pacquiao would win a big fight, people would go back and that made Floyd look that much better for what he did. Yeah. Do you feel in this case that with what Ugas did in beating Manny Pacquiao that this makes your, you look stronger for defeating him, you know, previously. For hey, you know what's funny is I wasn't, while you were asking that question, I wasn't even thinking about me. I was thinking about what would Floyd do <laughs> against Ugas. <Lugas? laughs> I don't know if anybody's talked about that yet, but hey, you know, Floyd is notorious for picking his opponents. Floyd is notorious for analyzing his opponents, seeing where they're weak, and, 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 and knowing what to do. And uh, I, I got to wonder if, if Floyd looked at that and, and he's like, you know, licking his chops a little bit. If he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to keep doing what I do and, you know, let everybody else worry about that. need a little more money that. to get in the yeah, ring. For but, that. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, I think that, you know, it's about that time. You know, when you beat certain gentlemen, certain fighters, and, um, and then those fighters go on to beat other fighters. Of course, you always got to say the styles make fights, but, but that guy do against that guy, so on and so forth. But... You, you got to respect me a little more, I think. You know, I think yeah. at that point in time when I fought Ugas, yes, he was my mandatory. And um, I told my dad, like, hey, let's do it. You know, I, I fight who they tell me to fight. I don't, I, I've never selected opponent, you know. Um, and so with that being said, uh, we took on Ugas. I think it was the, the timing was right for us. And I think that when Ugas took on Manny, it, 
apparently, certainly, the time was right for him. You know, so uh, I do. I think that should make me a little better. I think that people should say, hey, what would you guys do in the second fight with Sean Porter? You know, if you if you go and take a look at the fight with myself and Ugas, and you look at the fight with with Manny and Ugas, I don't think I think Man I think Ugas might have done 50 percent of what he did to Ugas. Or excuse me, to Manny. Ugas may have done 50 percent of what he did to Pacquiao to me. I don't think he used his entire arsenal, and I think that the things that I did prevented him from doing that. Styles make fights. Mm. Do you, so that sounds like a second fight would be even better. But do you feel that <laughs> fight? You got there's some other big fights out there being talked about, yeah. but do you think that rematch goes down before Sean Porter hangs him up? A, few a years. rematch with Ugas? Yeah, before it's all said and done. You know, um, I revisited the Ugas right at the fight, the rematch with Udenis Ugas, relatively soon after we were done with the fight. I would say less than a month. And my dad said, uh, he said, no, we're moving on to bigger and better things. We did what we needed to do. You won the fight. Uh, you fought how I wanted you to fight. You fought fantastic. I thought you boxed as beautiful as you could ever box. But I imagine won. him being a champ now yeah. and beating Pacquiao might. So, so, <laughs> so I said, all right, boom. And then we go on to, to Arrow and then so on and so forth. So then they announced, uh, they announced uh, uh, Wilder and Fury 3 here. And I called my dad the same day that I heard about it. I said, hey, this could be a perfect time to rematch Ugas. My dad said, because we didn't have a fight, so on and so forth. My dad said, I'll call you back. Call me back. He said, hey, uh, sounds like Ugas has got another dance partner, but it, it could work out. We'll see what happens. And then, you know, time started to, to go and so on and so forth. And now we're looking at uh, another fight, hopefully being signed really soon. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can't really answer that question right now for if a rematch with myself and Ugas happens. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what Ugas does next because uh, that was one night of greatness. Uh, my dad is notorious for for his sayings, and one of those sayings is uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna I'm edit it a little bit. I'm gonna uh, censor it, but he says uh, he says boxing doesn't care about you. The only thing boxing cares about is what have you done for me lately. He says so it doesn't matter how great you were in the last fight. Everybody's looking wants to know what you're gonna do in your next fight, and that goes for myself. Uh, my last great fight against uh, Errol Spence. We didn't want to take any sets back. Everything happened in the world. We get in the ring with Formella. We showed something different. wasn't the, the caliber opponent we wanted, but we were able to show something different and really, you know, please fans. So, the uh, op the objection, the objective in, in my life has always been to be bigger, better, greater. The next fight, and uh, I would I would love to see if if Ugas can be bigger, better, and greater than he was against Manny Pacquiao. Well, last one on that so just last one. Speaking to that. If Ugas is going to get in the ring with Errol Spence next, based on you fighting both of them, and you, how does that fight go down? I really just hate the fact that that we have to say that uh, Errol Spence Jr. isn't yeah, healthy. Yeah, yeah, I, have to, I hate yeah, the fact that yeah. even when he comes to the ring, we don't know how healthy he is. And again, because in getting excited about these fights, it just slips my mind yeah. as I ask. You and know, again, yeah, you know, nothing's going to happen in camp that's going to get out to the public unless we want it to. You know, so a week before this fight with Pacquiao. He has a, a eye injury. I'm, it's so unfortunate. And we don't know how, when, who, so on and so forth. Uh, just saying that to say that he's going to get in the ring again because he wants to. Doctors will tell him that he's healthy because he is. But once it comes to him and Ugas, and Ugas getting in the ring and what really happens, if he's 100%, I'll give you based on the 100% Errol Spence Jr., he beats a 100% your Dennis Ugas. Okay. I just think that he's got some things that Manny didn't have on their night. And he's got some things that can beat your Dennis Ugas. I saw some stuff from your Dennis Ugas that makes me smile, man. That makes me happy about your Dennis Ugas and what his future looks like. And if he can do the things that he did against Manny, he's a, he's, he's trouble for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, he they everybody's saying that he, he was avoided and he was feared and all that kind of stuff i got in the ring with him i didn't fear him i didn't I, I i didn't have any i wasn't avoiding him or anything like that but i think what he did against manny makes him makes people fear him more now and makes people want to avoid him more now so i will i will go on record for saying that i don't think anybody's going like this to fight your then now <laughs> right he did some he did some great things man um i'm very proud of him very Sean, I yeah. thank you for putting your, you know, Fox analyst hat yeah. on, your Porterway analyst yeah. on, especially when Sean the fighter has got so much <laughs> training and such yeah. big news coming. Yeah. I really yeah. appreciate it, Sean. Thank you. You got him anytime.